and hello. Uh, we are here with you uh, today. Well, I am here with you today with, uh, with uh, three um, fantastic foreigners who happen to be international students uh, in our lovely town of Krakow. Uh, so first of all, um, uh, we're sorry to keep you waiting. We just had a few little technical issues that have been now sorted. Uh, so we are uh, we are we are live. Um, I I think I hope you've had your dinner. Uh, maybe maybe like a second third cup of coffee or tea, whatever you're whatever you're having. And uh, first of all, I want to say good evening. We're we're hosting you here from the Multicultural Center in Krakow. My name is Karolina Czerskasz. I'll be your host for. Uh, for this evening, uh, and um, what we're going to do with you here today uh, is we're going to talk about being a student in Krakow, uh, and I'm sure uh, many of you um, are in this situation right now. We see that actually Krakow, you know, all of a sudden this week has gone from being this really like provincial town, you know, uh, where it's just, you know, a few people on the streets and things to whew, people, students everywhere. So first of all, all of you who are, um, who are plugging in tonight on Facebook, we welcome you if you want to post maybe where you're from, uh, whether you're from Krakow, whether you're from a small town or a big town, you know, close to Krakow, whether you're from Mexico or Russia or um, wherever else in the in the world, um, please, uh, please uh, just drop us a line on the on the chat to say hello. OK, um, and uh, I have the great pleasure to have with me here this evening three uh, international students from um, from the Jagiellonian University. So we're starting off today with our series of fantastic foreign students by presenting the oldest um, university in the, in the country in this part of Europe. Um, don't worry if you're from another university in, uh, in Krakow, um, your turn will come as well. But uh, for this evening, we're starting off with three really um, well. I'm 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 very interested to hear your stories. I know uh, the three of you just kind of in you know uh, from from different places, um, but uh, we would like to know this evening where you're from, how you got to Krakow, um, uh, what you're doing here, and what you plan to do in the future. So that we'd like to do all of that in a nutshell this evening. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to what I'd like to do, to do is actually I'm just going to very briefly present my three guests, just their names, and then you can think, okay, where they're from, maybe what they're doing. Um, you can make, uh, you can you know can fill in the blanks for now, and then they'll fill in the blanks for you. So um, on my on my screen to my left, I have. Margarita, who's uh, here with us today. Hello, Margarita. Um, Hi, everyone. Very nice to have you here. And we're going to go into your story in just a second. And in the middle, I have Valeria. Hello, Valeria. Nice to have you here with us. Hello, everyone. Today, hello. Um, and thank you for thank you for meeting us here today, Valeria. And last but not least, I have uh, on my right, I and maybe on your left, I don't know. Um, I have Marco. Hello, Marco. Hi, Carolina. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> I, rather good evening. I think. Well, it depends what time zone. You're I think in. all depends. Um, <laughs> right. Um, so, what I'd like to what I'd like to start off with is actually one thing margarita you said uh you said uh today when i asked you how, how you're doing and you said i've had a polish bureaucratic day and those of you who 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 have um who you know who have been there 
<laughs> you can maybe sympathize. Before, before I ask you about your Polish bureaucratic day and then your past and how you got here, just one, um, one note for all of you, for the three of you here, and for all of you listening to us. If you have a Polish bureaucratic day and you need help, okay, or if you if you're thinking, I need that PESEL number and I don't know how to do it, okay? Or if you're thinking, ah, what, how do I get my, how do I renew my um, residency card? Or what do I do? I'm moving around all the time. What do I do? What, how do I regulate my, how do I legalize, regulate my stay? You're in luck because at the Multicultural Center, we also have um uh information a migrant info point so an information point for foreigners living in our city and we also have um um sp specific specific um times and hours um and actually any time you want we cater to international students okay you have any questions about your again maybe about your healthcare insurance your um maybe you want to work on the side and you're not sure about taxes and things like that any formal legal questions you have um visit us at the um the migrant uh, the the migrant info point at Krakow and my dear friend Anya I think will be posting a link to our website and to our Facebook uh, so you can access. Please call us, okay? We speak English, Polish, Russian, Ukrainian, sometimes French, and if you if you ask, we'll probably get someone to speak another language for you, okay? So uh, on that note, um, I'm going to start with Margarita. Now, can you tell us just briefly, um, did you make it through the day? And how did you get here in the first place? So can we ask, um, where, and where are you from? How did you get here? Uh, and uh, just a little bit of your migra migration story to Krakow. The floor is yours. Uh, so many questions in one. So um, I'm from Russia, from the central part of the country. Um, and here in Krakow, I'm doing my master's, which is actually not fully Jagiellonian program I'm doing in Erasmus Mundus and it has a very long name which is Central and East European Russian and Eurasian Studies and uh, I'm doing a um, Central and East European pathway and uh, that's why I'm in Poland because Poland is my research focus basically um, so um, before Krakow I had um, two semesters. One was in Estonia, in Tartu, which is also a student city with a great old university. And the second semester I spent in Scotland, in Glasgow University. Um, and now my full second year I will be spending here in Krakow. But that's, I think, not my full migration story because I also had a chance to live in Hungary for a year, but maybe we can go back to that later if needed. Okay, I've, no I've noted a few things down. Thank you, Margarita. I have a few questions for you in just a bit, but I'm going to do a power round here, a quick round uh, with everyone else. And um, uh, before that, I want to do a shout out to uh, Asha from Poland. Uh, nice to see you, nice to hear you and uh, read you as well, Asha. Thanks for being with us. Susanna, uh, hello to you too. Um, we'd like to know where you're from. And on that note, Valeria, um, can you say a few words about your past and how your past got you to where are you from? Well, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Valeria Quintana. I'm from Mexico. And uh, every time you meet a foreigner person in Poland, you always ask the question, why Poland? And I think every time that foreigner will answer, well, it was destiny. And for sure, for me, that's the answer because um, I always wanted to study in Europe. I wanted to live the college European experience. But at the moment of choosing the actual place to go, I had no idea where. So
so uh, my dad had uh, has some friends, Polish friends in Mexico and Mexican friends in Poland. And he just came one day with the idea of, well, hey, they are really nice people. Poland should be a really nice place. And after that, I came here two years ago. I fell in love with the city. I came here to Krakow. I fell in love with the university, the Jagalanian. And after that, I just started learning Polish. I tried to do anything, everything I had to do to come here. And well, right now I'm a first year of law school in Polish in the Jagalanian University. Wow. Um, okay, we're going to have to go back to your story and ask you very difficult Polish questions in just a second. <laughs> Thank you, Valeria. Um, and maybe it is it is uh, it is destiny it's really nice to 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 think about that isn't it um okay thank you marco um let's hear your let's hear your brief story of how you got from point a to point b maybe to point you know y and z along the way to get to Krakow. where are you from <laughs> of course uh well thank you so much caro uh i am from mexico as well and uh, everything started actually very similarly to you in, in, in Canada. I was still living in Toronto in 2019 and I was working there. So uh, I had the idea of taking a, a, a gap year and maybe going to France and study French. So I decided to come back from Canada to Mexico. I applied for a working holiday in the French embassy in Mexico City. But unfortunately, one week before having my appointment, uh, they reached out the, no, uh, the limited number of Akhans Travail. So uh, in that moment, I was okay, I'm going back to Canada. I'm going to study a master. And, and, and that's pretty much all. But uh, at the meanwhile, my brother was studying at the Czech Republic. So uh, when we finally met after some years uh, without seeing each other, uh, he commented to me like, hey, you should take a look uh, maybe at the Czech Republic, maybe Hungary. It's not just like Western European countries, because I would say that some of the cliches that we have when we talk about Europe is that we tend to just focus on Western European countries. And sometimes we completely forget that there is also Central Europe and, and that there is also mm -hmm. Eastern Europe. So I also took a look uh, based on his recommendation. And uh, I, I really like uh, one thing, one country led me to the other. And until I found actually the University of Warsaw. So I applied there. It was already September. I was just waiting for my results. And out of curiosity, I checked the university rankings from the Quackerly Simons, the QS rankings. So for my surprise, I noticed that the best university in Poland was not the University of Warsaw, but Jagiellona University. And I decided to take a look as well. So I, I observed at the offer that they have, and I found the master that I am a student, that I, is, is, I am a senior student, in the Master of International Security and Development. So I really liked the content. It was very innovative, so I signed up uh, there. And uh, yes, the, uh, also when I started to study the, the history of, of Krakow, I noticed that there are many things compared to Warsaw. It's a city that was completely preserved after the, the years. So it was preserving this or originality. And I became really curious because it was completely different from the things that I was uh, growing up uh, having in my surroundings. So that's uh, the summary of this story. That's a, uh, okay, that's a lot, you know, that's a lot in a nutshell. That's a, how many places have we got to? That's, uh, wow, thank you, Marco. I will come back to you um, for a, f a few questions. Uh, along that storyline. Um, but maybe I'll go back to Margarita. And, and also, just so you know, you know, you can you can ask each other questions as well. You just, you know, raise your hand, right? Or, or uh, the right hand um, to, to interject at, at any point. Um, so uh, Margarita, I'd like to I'd like to go back to you for a second, because you you mentioned this uh, very enigmatic Erasmus Mundus program with a very long title. Yes. Um, now, some of you who may be listening to us now or later may be very familiar with Erasmus. Even if you're not from, if you're if you're from Europe, you're certain, certainly familiar with it. Even if you're not from Europe, actually, that's a question for you, Marco and Valeria. Had you heard of Erasmus? before coming to Europe? Is it something that kind of in, in, uh, that some, somehow gets to Mexico or to the other places or Canada where you've been? 
Uh, well, uh, yes, at least in my case. Sorry, okay. sorry. Oh, yes, Valeria, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I did know about the program, but uh, just because I told you, I have always been interested in studying in Europe. So since the beginning, I researched that. Uh, but in I think in Mexico, we don't have uh, a program similar to that. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's so... Okay, so Erasmus, um, oh, first of all, hold on, uh, just like a little shout out to Anga Vilar. Um, uh, I'm sure Valeria also, you know, really uh, feels for you. Thank you for that very kind note. Um, okay, so so uh, we, we know Erasmus, more or less, if you're in Krakow, you probably know Erasmus. It has some infamy, some for me, some, you know, it's famous and infamous, of course. We love Erasmus, we love Erasmus students. But then we have this thing called Erasmus Mundus. Margarita, can you, can you explain to us, how does it differ? How, uh, um, how are you Erasmus Mundus and how is it different to Erasmus, please? Well, so basically the whole Erasmus thing is uh, kind of an umbrella term for um, different um, European Union programs for youth and like youth um, education and development. Uh, and if we talk just about Erasmus, then it's usually just an exchange semester. So it's kind of a short term opportunity to go and have one semester abroad uh, with with uh, some scholarship provided. And Erasmus Mundus is basically a set of master programs uh, and there are a lot of uh, different areas. It's like a huge list of areas that you can choose. And the idea is that some universities uh, from different countries unite in the one consortium and they write a study program together and uh, then approve it in the European Commission institutions. Probably it's, I don't know which, at what one exactly, but yeah. So the idea is that there is a consortium of universities and as an Erasmus Mundus student, you move between these universities during your um, program. And it can be, usually it's three or four universities. So you get to spend at least one semester at um, every university. Uh, but for example, for my program, we have eight universities in the consortium and two of them are our mother university, which means that they are mandatory for everyone in the first year and then in the second year we all go to like six different universities in six different countries according to our research focus and interests. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, it's um, so uh, can we say that that mobility is at the heart of these uh, of these programs, right? Um, yes. And, mm -hmm. and so Krakow is actually just a stop on your on your way kind of through these European uh, universities in a sense? Well, I would say that it was a final destination also because I will be spending like the longer time here and it's my um, like my main university in the sense that it's the university where I will be writing and defending my thesis. Um, so that's the university, the, the main university of my pathway, uh, like my, the university of my focus, let's say. So mm -hmm. it's more than just a, a stop by. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a, a, and also in a sense, you know, going back to Valeria, what you say, you want to come to Europe, right? And so ultimately, actually something like the Erasmus Mundus programs, you know, then give you the sense of kind of this European experience a little bit uh, in, in that sense, especially coming from coming from outside of Europe. Would you say that's the case? Um, actually, technically, yes, uh, but actually I'm not doing Erasmus in uh, mm -hmm. my career because uh, I'm a law student 
uh, so uh, and as you know, uh, I'm studying in Polish. So it's already for me a really big challenge and uh, it's, it's starting to study in a language that it's not even my second one. Uh, it's one that I have been uh, studying for two years. Uh, so first I want to establish fully here in Poland uh, and maybe then uh, I will look to another places, but my prior priority right now is to make Poland my full home. Uh, completely language speaking, uh, culturally speaking, and uh, I want to be completely Polish when I finish this. Well, and legally speaking, if you're if you're studying law, that's a whole lot of information and knowledge that you have to gather in a completely foreign system. Um, so, if I can ask you, you're I mean, you're a month into it, yeah. Well, actually, this week was the first week because uh, college was... starts first of October. Do you know what I? I I don't know why I just said that because I know because I just started, <laughs> and it's been maybe it's because it's been such an intensive week. It feels like a month, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, that was a total slip of the tongue. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so it's been a week, Valeria. I'm going to give you. I'm going to uh, ask you a question, and if you can answer it right away, great. If not, then take your time and I'll go to Marco. Valeria, what is the most difficult Polish legal term you have learned so far this week? Or what is the, what is the most kind of enigmatic um, course that you're taking uh, in, you know, in your studies at this, at this point in time? Do you need a few sec? Do you need a few minutes to think about that? Um, no. Well, actually, I think I have the answer uh, right right now, mm -hmm. uh, because, for example, when my parents were asking me, "Oh, what subjects do you have?" Uh, I was telling them, like, "Oh, for sure, this is intro introduction to uh, this and that." And for like a whole month, apparently, I mistranslated one of my subjects. And I didn't know until this week when I went and I was like, what is this class about? I'm sorry, I I, I didn't know. Uh, it's uh, the STEM do Pravos Nasfa. And uh -huh. I was so sure it was something about like giving, uh, sorry, uh, like uh, legal terms. But apparently it has nothing to do with it. So um, that has been the biggest surprise for me this week, for sure. But that's great. That's great. Okay. Well, I'm sure there'll be many more surprises, but um, I'm glad that that's a that's an easy that you know you can ease your way into it with those kind of surprises, right? Um, okay. Thanks, Valeria. Marco, I want to go go back to you because you're you're a man of many uh, who wears many hats and uh, you have many roles. And one of your roles that I know of. Um, is that you're the, the uh, student board representative in the UNA Europa Alliance. And I want to go back to, um, you know, the consortium, the Erasmus Mundus, you know, that Margarita was talking about in these consortium programs. And, I, and I'd like to ask you just uh, a few, you know, a few words about um, what you're doing now, because you came to Krakow, you you said a few words about your program, and I'll come back to the program in, in just a bit. But also, you know, you have you have you have different roles. So, can you tell us a little bit about the Una Europa um, and what you're doing in it, and how it may kind of compare to what Margarita said? Well, I, I would say that right now we are living in a world of globalization. So naturally, uh, not just academically speaking, but professionally and, and more pra practically speaking, the universities are trying to build up meaningful connections all over the world. And when we talk about Europe, we are talking about a tradition throughout the European Union of gathering the universities, to, the universities together. But uh, what it exists right now is uh, Erasmus Mundus, that, that after all is the most popular exchange program that it exists. Uh, among different countries in, in Europe. But uh, in the very specific case of the UNE Europe Alliance, we are looking forward to something uh, very challenging that consists of building up the university of the future. UNE Europa is about to try to find out what should be the education in the next 10 years. And most importantly, 
not just being exchange students, but actually try to find out common grounds, common subjects, and build up this uh, university uh, futuristic online campus in which we can be students simultaneously at these eight partner universities that belong to the Alliance. So which universities participate here? We have the University of Edinburgh. We have uh, La Universidad Complutense from Madrid, a University of Bologna, uh, the Sorbonne University in Paris, and so on. So uh, naturally, in the case of Poland, we represent with the Jailona University uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the Alliance. So uh, the university appoints one uh, of its students to be the representative from all the voices, uh, all the student voices into the Una Europa student board. And also there I have a position, a current position as chair in which I just don't represent, uh, just not represent the universities of uh, the students from Jagiellonian University that are over uh, 30,000 students, but also all the students that belong to the Alliance to represent a total of 400,000 students. So uh, yeah, in summary, this is what I do there. Okay, building the university of the future. Marco, you have a you have a big task on your hands, I have to say. Um, we have a big task on our hands. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, and so wow, I mean this is this is like Erasmus Mundus kind of you know 2.0. So you're talking about the 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 European Universities Initiative, right? And so Una Europa is a part of you know this kind of first round of uh, Europe, the European University Initiative. So it's it's kind of actually seems like it's building on Erasmus Mundus, right? Erasmus and then Erasmus Mundus and building these kind of consortia of universities of the future. Okay, so let's get into let's get into maybe the present, and then uh, then we'll finish off with the future. Okay, so in, in the present time, um, maybe I'd like to go back to you, uh, Margarita. You're here in Krakow, you've had this experience in Tartu and in Glasgow. No, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. okay, in Tartu and in Glasgow. Uh, and you're here for a set period of time. You're here for the whole year, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, okay? Yeah. What, um, what do you want? What do you most want to do here in your in your research, but also in you know in Krakow and, and around? If you can just give us a few hints of um, what your you know what what your interests are. Well, um, so my answer actually will be connected, like uh, closely connected with COVID, because obviously um, it affected the program much and in this uh, Erasmus Mundus programs a huge component of it is actually um, cultural exchange and the opportunity to be together with the people from all over the world and to be um, together in new countries and COVID kind of cut this thing so uh, for example in Estonia we were only for people out of 35 in the cohort who could make it there just because of the restrictions and borders and embassies being closed. Um, so the whole last year was in line and now here in Krakow we are actually finally having classes face to face which is really sweet and it gives you this um, um, warm feelings really uh, because I was I, I really miss that. But at the same time, it gives you it gives you a lot of this social awkwardness uh, because we are kind of uh, lost the habit. We lost the habit to be in this social situation in the university. So um, it was a challenging week, and uh, that's I guess the main thing uh, for me in Krakow to kind of like make up for the social life that I missed during my <laughs> first year. Uh, at master's, which is basically half of the program. Um, and it goes to both like university and research and some social life, which is out of university. 
Um, and yeah, I'm actually, so now I have started my internship in the multicultural center and my thesis is supposed to be connected with and like closely al aligned with this because I'm gonna write about the integration of migrants in Poland mm -hmm. and um, this is all very, um, this is all very um, relatable and I mean, uh, but I am a migrant myself too, so uh, yeah, that's, that's the interest, that's the plan um, and we will not be having classes in our second semester technically because it is just for the thesis um but we can we can grab some classes if we want but mm, probably um well i don't know we'll see how it goes so that's that's the rough description okay thank you margarita i mean you've said you've mentioned a few points and those of you, you know, Valeria, Marco, uh, who uh, are also here, those of you who are listening to us, it's been a tough year and a half, hasn't it? Um, and studying during the pandemic, you know, and teaching, uh, you know, from the other side, um, it's been a challenge, hasn't it? Now, I want to ask, maybe go on to Valeria and then to Marco to pick up on what you feel maybe you have learned in the last year and a half as you know valeria you've been you've been studying polish right you've been studying a language but also i assume virtually right or at least distance for for this time um can you say maybe a few words about how you felt this week going into the classroom for the first time and if you're maybe you have a hybrid form of learning for you know for the bigger lectures i assume i don't know and also maybe what you've what opportunities you see or what you've you feel that you've gained maybe in the last you know um maybe tools you've gained or you know competencies you've gained in the last year and a half that that may help you uh, along the way and and if you want to you know kind of uh, say a few words and maybe those listening to us will think oh yeah man, i felt that or oh that's a good you know that's a good point so um yeah your your thoughts your reflections valeria yes well actually this week uh on tuesday it was the first time i had gone to an actual class in two years for me because uh when i was my last year of high school in mexico before covid uh my high school was on a strike so actually before the quarantine i stopped going to class so for me it was uh it has been two years uh without any classes um in person so this Tuesday was uh, for me amazing. Uh, I think uh, I don't remember the last time I saw that many people together. Um, it, it was great. And yeah, and definitely it has been really challenging this COVID times for everyone. Uh, learning has been really hard because uh, as a student, you don't really engage uh, with the content of the class because well, it's, it's really different to actually be in class than to just uh, watch uh, your computer and do some PowerPoint presentation. And, uh, but for sure, what I, I could tell is that um, we are all trying. I, I think that's the thing. Uh, teachers are, teachers uh, have been great, uh, at least my teachers. They are trying to find new ways to improve. They're trying to encourage uh, students and uh, for example language is I think a really hard topic to learn online because it's actually really really social um, mm -hmm. so for I, I had uh, online classes with the actually with the Jagalanian University the uh, Institut um, mm -hmm. and to be honest they have been great they have tried so many so many different forms uh, of teaching and uh, I've learned actually a lot uh, probably not as much as, as I would have going to actual classes in person in Poland. Uh, but I for sure, I tried my best uh, and I know they did. So I think that's what we, ha we have learned here in COVID that we can just do our best. And I mean, let's hope also for the best. Okay, um, thank you, thank you for that. I'm going to, I'm going to get back to you in just a sec. I give you time to think about your, your favorite Polish word the most kind of, you know, the one that just like sounds 
you know, uh, is your the favorite sound that you have. But I'll 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 come back to you uh, for that one, Marco. Can you tell us a few words you've been studying because um, you're uh, you're studying here and you have been studying for the last. Uh, few years, right, in uh, in Poland. Can you tell us a little bit? Also, you you said um, before that the content of your of your uh, degree program is innovative, and that's what you know got you got you interested in it. Can you say a few words? And also, also how you you know how you how you went through the pandemic and and what you got out of it uh, that you can share with us. Well, uh, of course, Carolina, in the case of my, my program, I found this innovative because when I was making this research about master's programs, uh, I realized that either they would be completely focusing on security or development. Like we were talking about two very different uh, subjects. So what makes this uh, master program special is that the bridging point in between, that when we talk about security, we are talking about preventing measures but also the, what happens uh, during and after a conflict. But also it's completely directed with development because after war happens, after a uh, peace comes uh, to real reign again, we have a period in which institutions need to be developed again, sometimes rebuilt or sometimes strengthened. So there is, of course, a very direct relation in between. And naturally, I didn't want it to miss either one part or the other. So when I found uh, this bridge point in this program, the, the, the scope uh, upon the, the practical world, uh, I became really interested. And uh, about the pandemic times, definitely uh, it, wa it was a really hard time. I was already in Poland because I have been here for more than two years already. So in, in that moment, uh, it was very challenging because it was a moment in which when you are new in a country, naturally you would like to explore that country. And of course, to build up meaningful relationships with other human beings. So when the lock lockdown came over, everything uh, uh, stopped. But also, I, I have to tell you something. I really believe that the crisis moments are also times of opportunities. So what I can tell you is that when I started this project uh, in SAIA, this, this organization, international organization at UYOD, uh, we took advantage and we, could, we took leverage from that. Because after all, when all the other organizations were shutting down, because they believe, or at least they thought, that during the pandemic it wouldn't be uh, reasonable to do events, even because they were online, we decided to actually uh, grow up in that time, to take the opportunity uh, while the others were away, to actually focus that attention towards us. And uh, we find the perfect scenario to build up this organization and to make it grow. So I would say that, yes, it was also an opportunity to grow up in Poland. Well, that's a really nice, that's, that is really uplifting, actually. And for those of you who are listening to us, as an international student, um, it seems like there are options to be involved in, in the community life as well, right? So, you know, Marco, you're talking about um, the students, it's a students association, isn't it, right? For international, uh, it's international, so it's for also Polish, but, but international students, right? Um, so the student, uh, just for those of you who didn't catch the acronym, so it's the Student Association of International Affairs and Development, from what, uh, from what I know, Marco. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe, Valeria, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're, also, you're also involved, yeah? So, so it seems like also there are, you know, there are opportunities um, for international students to be involved in the life in the academic life, you know, of the of the city, um, and uh, that's that's a really good example that you share with us, uh, Marco, and very uplifting. And so I want to have one last round, and hopefully it'll be uplifting as well. Um, I want to go back to this to this idea of building the university of the future because I really like that idea, um, and I want to ask you about your visions of what the university of the future would look like what would your ideal university of the future be um do you think that 
the time of the pandemic also, Marco, you said, you know, okay, crises make us grow, right? And that's, uh, you know, it's kind of strength and adversity, isn't it, right? So is there something that we can take away from, you know, from, from these past uh, almost two years now? Um, and how for you would the University of the Future look like? Um, Margarita, we'll start with you. Well, <laughs> just a light, you know, just a light question for the end, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I don't know. For me, um, the thing that I really picked up from this whole situation is that universities, um, it's not just about like articles, the books that you read or like the papers that you write, but it's um, the very first and the most important thing, not thing, but um, so it's about people. It's all about connections, uh, warm connections, uh, light connections. So um, for me, it was a difficult a year um, year, I mean, the study year and year and a half in general, uh, without people, and I feel that um, without having this uh, interaction in person, the education is not the same. I think it's not that efficient, not that fun, not that enjoyable to do. Uh, but that's my personal thing, or maybe it's just because I am like too tired of this Zooms and having everything, having basically all your life online, but I really don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's like, uh, obviously, technologies grow and develop and um, they will um, kind of, intervene and go deeper and deeper um, to the process of education. But I think the most important uh, point for the future university is like balance between this life, actual life classes, actual life interaction and all the technologies and online stuff. Yeah, okay, a balance people connections. I think those are three good keywords to take away uh, from what you just said, Margarita. Uh, Valeria, how about you? The university of the future. And thinking, okay, for those of you studying law, you know, um, what, you know, how are we supposed to envision this university of the future, you know, I don't know, in, in, law studies right and uh uh in the in in the law studies department valeria what are your thoughts um well i agree with marco and margarita that the connections are super important not only inside the university but but as the uno europa program with other universities with other countries in the erasmus program for example also the connections you make with your professors uh who are I, for me, uh, in the university, have been people that inspire me. So I think it's also really important to um, not have that distance between the student and the teacher, but actually just learn from them and as, as much as they learn from you. And um, I, I want to say that um, for me, a really big um, sentiment I had the first uh, on Tuesday, uh, the first time I went to actual classes here. Uh, it was uh, the moment I arrived into my classroom, I just felt this, uh, this emotion of like anything I wanted to learn, anything I was questioning, uh, here was the answer. So I think that that's the whole point of a university. Like we are trying not to know everything, but to know just a little bit more than we used to. That's lovely. Um, thank you for that. And I want to I want to pick up on that um, in my last note, um, thinking about learning from learning from each other. Uh, OK, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Valeria and Marco. I'll go to you. Um, your your vision. Uh, you have you, you know, you seem you have it, it seems like you have a lot of visions, Marco. What's your vision of the uh, of the future of universities? 
and learning? Well, uh, I, I completely agree with, with, with what Margarita and Valeria just uh, exposed. I think that is very important, uh, these points. And I would also add, because this is also one question that, that a few days ago I, I was asked, like, what would you consider is this element? So I would say that uh, is about responding one question, how to face the world after graduation. And I think that this is fundamental because after all, all of us, we are in the university because we are preparing ourselves to face the world after graduation. So what we would like to uh, know and to get the, the experience is on how to face these challenges, how to overcome them. It doesn't matter if we are talking about an online campus. It doesn't matter if we are uh, attending classes uh, in person. It's about how we solve the problems from a professional scope. So I would say that this is the first element that we always need to take into consideration. So it's about providing education with quality, but most importantly, education with meaning, because we are not just forming students that are gonna be able to tackle down the problems of the future. We are also forming the humans of the future, meaning the humans that are going to mold the new world. So when a human being has principles and values, it could also envision uh, and reflect uh, those values in the education. So education should be a process of also learning on how to live, uh, not just uh, uh, learning academic aspects, but also how to solve our personal conflicts and, and problems. Finding uh, this point in between uh, yes, in between the theory, the practice, and also the meaning of life. So for me, this is one uh, philosophical, I would say, but this is the first step that I would start towards the education of the future. And then we can talk about many technical aspects, but this is the parting point for me. How lovely. I mean, we started off, you know, talking about bureaucratic issues, <laughs> And, you know, and getting to Krakow, and we've ended up talking about how to educate the humans of the future and the meaning of life. Wow. <laughs> that is fantastic. And, and actually, I think that's a really good, um, that's, that's, that's a really good reflection of, of learning, isn't it, right? You, you start off in one place and it leads you uh, to so many different places. Um, and I want just to, just a few, you know, a few last notes. You've, first of all, you've really, uh, you've really made me smile. Thank you. Uh, and you've, and you've inspired me. Um, um, and I just want to share with you how I felt uh, this week, going into a classroom, uh, so I'm on. Uh, I've I've been on the other side for for a little bit of time now, uh, and um, and I had the pleasure to go into the classroom full of international students um, on Wednesday, and the buzz of the classroom. Do you remember that? going into a classroom and hearing noise. That's what I've missed for the last year and a half. And sometimes that noise, you know, going back to what you said, Margarita, there's that sense of kind of social awkwardness at the moment, isn't it? We have to learn how to communicate with each other and, and be around so many people, right? Yes. But that, that noise of the classroom is um is something that is you know that is un unmistakable and something that uh I, I i cherish every time i go in to hear people talking um and hear that buzz of the classroom yeah and so um it was with great pleasure also tonight that uh we had this little kind of buzz, you know, on uh, on on um, online, we know it's not the same, is it? But um, perhaps with the tools that we, you know, that we have at hand now, um, we're able to, you know, we're able to somehow 
balance that was a word that came up yeah somehow balance um the you know the online and the technological tools that we have with um being uh next to and communicating with human beings and building you know building um the humans of the future if the humans of, of the future have ideas and lovely talks uh you know lovely thoughts like the three of you and some of you probably um listening to us here tonight i i have i have uh, i have hope in the future um we have we have um we have a question from um from the chat and mustafa asks is there anything you would advise for someone just moving and thinking of settling in krakow that's a very good question, Mustafa. Um, maybe Valeria, I'll, uh, can I can I ask you to to give your thoughts on that one? Yes, of course. I think uh, the most important part is just learn a few words in Polish. Uh, I don't speak Polish. I, I would say it's the most useful phrase you will need, uh, and um, and also be prepared for the cold. Uh, because I remember the first time I came through to Poland, it was winter. I was definitely not prepared for that. So just be prepared for uh, anything that could happen here in Poland. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Valeria. Marco, any, any thoughts? Uh, yes, absolutely. I would say have initiative. And what I'm trying to say with this, I always talk about uh, the Polish people being uh, closet talkatives. So it means that they love to talk, but they just don't like to express it. So when you have the initiative of meeting someone new in Poland, always have the initiative to say hello. And you will realize that the people love to talk, but they will never talk to you first. So this is the first advice that I could give you, because after all, human beings, we're about uh, interrelations. So uh, one way of, of, of being healthy is to have friends, to meet new people, but always have the initiative to talk with that uh, human being that you have next to you. Okay, take the initiative. That's a good. That's a that's a good one. Um, thank you, Marco. Margarita, you've had a baptism of fire this week. I know you just came. So any any advice, you know, kind of uh, uh, for for those who are who are thinking of settling here. Well, I would add to the uh, human part that Marka mentioned. I would add the technical tools and I would say Google and gather information and then do the fact checking um, and like focus and spend one or two evenings and write everything down into the notes because it's also a lot of, uh, especially in Krakow, there is a lot of resources available for um, foreign students or for experts. Um, so you come and you're already prepared, you know something that's important, or at least you know places or some people um, where you can go and ask directly, or even approach some people through Facebook, for example, and ask some questions. Uh, that's also very important. Okay, thank you. Mustafa, I will add that um, you can um, you can look at and find uh, on the Multicultural Center uh, website, Anya, if uh, you're here with us, uh, perhaps there's a link already. If not, there will be very soon to um, the a guidebook for international students studying in Krakow, uh, ready for you. It's in English at the moment, and it's, uh, it will be available in um, Russian and Ukrainian, uh, uh, hopefully soon. So um, please, uh, please um, take a look. Uh, it's a practical guide, um, but also um, there are also links to different uh, associ student associations. One of them, you know, uh, that, that Marco uh, told us about um, uh, and about student life in the city. And um, and your last question, Mustafa, is English enough to survive here? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so um, 
Marco, Valeria, and then Margarita. Marco, is English enough? How is your Polish, Marco? <laughs> well, I, I even laugh when you ask me. I, I, I know some basic Polish. Like I could go to the shopping uh, mall and 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 um and communicate uh, well, but that's pretty much all. However, uh, one thing that for me is very interesting is that most of the young population in Poland speak English and they are they tend to be fluent in English just they don't know it they you will hear all the time oh I don't speak Polish my, my, my I don't speak English my English is not good enough but most of the people is actually fluent in English so yeah, I would say that this is like uh, Shakespeare so right? yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay thank you that's a that's a that's a good point maybe i'll go to margarita and we'll end off with valeria and you can tell us a few words in polish valeria margarita is english enough to survive well english is definitely enough but i uh, i have already started to learn polish uh, a bit before but i also have an kind of the not acid, but what the word you better use for it. So I can understand some because like my um, native language is obviously Slavic too. So there are some similarities and I probably can understand more even if my level is low, which it is. Um, but yeah, even if you are not a Slavic language speaker, um, English is enough. Yeah, and people even uh, on the streets and the shops, even if uh, they don't know English, they try their best to help like with, I don't know, body language or translation apps. And I've seen this personally. So um, you will survive, definitely. That's for sure, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Margarita. Um, I, I have a I have a small suggestion as well. Just just smi just smile your way through the shops and the and uh, you know through bureaucracy and you'll be and you'll be fine. Uh, just smile and and uh, you'll get them the initiative. Um, and Valeria, if we can ask you for a few of your favorite words in Polish and maybe actually the most, you know, the, you were, you were saying, okay, the most important thing is nie mówię po polsku, so I don't speak Polish, right? But besides that, anything that you can say to Mustafa and others, what's like this, you know, the key kind of key words and the ones that you have remembered the most? Um, well, of course, uh, whatever you are, no matter what time of the day, uh, always say uh, good morning uh, or good afternoon. That it's that is really important. You don't want to be rude because Polish people are like Margarita said. They're really, really polite and they're really helpful. Even uh, as Margo said, like most of it, most of them speak uh, English at a certificate level. But even when they don't, uh, they really try, try really hard to help you. So try to do the same thing. Uh, I think uh, Polish people find it really funny when uh, they encounter someone who's learning Polish because uh, they are not going to be like me, you know, saying like, oh, this is not good enough. They're actually going to enjoy a lot seeing you uh, learn their culture. So uh, I would say that if you can, uh, no pressure, obviously. I, I would really recommend you uh, to start uh, studying Polish uh, because it's an amazing language, really complicated, um, I will say, uh, but it's it, it's really, really amazing. I think, I think it has a lot of soul in it and uh, you're going to be able to comprehend the culture more with the language than uh, just by being there um, in English. And I Thank would say... You that uh, my favorite Polish word is uh, dusza because uh, it means soul. Uh, if you know a little bit of Polish, you're going to know that there are a lot of words that are uh, onomatopoeic, uh, which means that they come from mm -hmm. the sound they make. And I think if the soul would make a sound, it would sound something like like that, like dusza, like that Polish sound. Uh, that's why I really like that, that word. It's my favorite one for sure. That's lovely. Yeah, no kidding. Now I'm going to think of Dusha in a different way. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Valeria. For those of you who, who, are, who are taking notes, Dusha. That's a, a nice uh, ear, your soul. That's nice. Um, that, was, that was lovely. Okay, so on that note, um, I, would, uh, I would 
like to make one more point and a note of advice um, for, for, for the three of you um, and Mustafa and others who may be listening. Um, when I came to Krakow 16 years ago, 17, I'm sorry, 17 years ago, um, I thought I wanted, Valeria, I was like, you, yeah, I want to, you know, come to Europe, right? Um, I, I'm, I'm Polish, but I grew up in, uh, in Canada and I thought, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I want, I want to, I want to see Poland again and I want to discover Europe. And I came to Krakow and I, did, I thought, yeah, I'll be here for a little bit of time and I'll go here and there and, you know, I'll be, you know, a young, you know, mobile person. And then one year went by. Two years went by, 10 years went by, 17 years have gone by, and I'm still trapped in Krakow. So um, uh, advice to you, watch out, because Krakow is a trap. Um, but, and I say this um, many a time to students and to, and to friends who come, it's a nice trap. It's a pretty nice trap. And uh, having the three of you here and having such a di diverse uh, community and a multi, really a multicultural uh, community around us in Krakow makes it all the more dynamic and diverse and lovely. So um, Valeria, but, uh, thank you very much for being with us here today. Uh, we had the pleasure to have Valeria Quintana Solis, if I'm pronouncing your name uh, correctly here with us. Uh, Valeria, as she mentioned at the beginning, is from Mexico. She's been studying Polish for two years and she is in her first year of law studies. Not an easy subject, Valeria. Um, really difficult to get into and in Polish, James <laughs> Louise. Wow. Uh, so you are you are uh, really uh, an inspiration. If Valeria can study law in Polish, you all of you uh, can uh, can safely come to Krakow and, and be okay. Um, then we had uh, Margarita Kligina. Um, and uh, Margarita's from, from Russia. She's studying in the Erasmus Mundus Joint Degree in Central and East European and Eurasian Studies, actually otherwise known as Ceres. Uh, um, it's such a long title. Uh, it and, uh, it uh, I forget but, it every time. But every luckily time. it has an acronym, right? So Margarita is here through this kind of program, the, this intensive mobility program, uh, where she will be here for uh, for one year in, in, in Krakow, finishing her MA. Uh, and last but not least, thank you for being with us here uh, tonight, Marco Reyes Bernal uh, from Toluca, Mexico. Um, uh, and Marco has been in Krakow for two for two years, a little bit more than two years now, yeah, Marco? Um, studying in the MA in International Security and Development uh, at, the, at the Jagiellonian University, um, uh, co-founder of the Student Association of International Affairs and Development, and uh, right now serving um, as the UJ representative on the student board for the Una Europa Alliance. There are so many different things you can come and do here in Krakow as a student. Um, so thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Uh, you really have three very diverse stories and very diverse kind of directions that you're going in. Um, and it's lovely to, to hear all of you and that you made it and you found Krakow and you, you know, you made it, you made it here and um, you're you're adding that your little bit to to our community. So thank you so much. And for those of you uh, listening uh, here with us, we'd like to hear your stories as well. Please write to us. Um, come visit us at the Multicultural Center. We are we happily take 
volunteers, uh, interns of all different nationalities. Um, please, if you are having um, uh, difficulties or challenges or just questions um, about your about any anything concerning legal matters or formal matters or life matters uh, that we can help with, um, please do come see us, uh, write to us at the uh, Migrant Info Point uh, in Krakow. We will happily uh, uh, try to help as best we can. So again, uh, um, I think on that note, I um, welcome you to this new academic year, uh, 2021. Jesus, it's already 2021. 2021, 22. I wish you all uh, a very fruitful, um, um, colorful, inspiring academic year. And um, so lovely to have you here with us tonight. And that is it. And that is all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.